Hey everybody and welcome to the weekly Scope, 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 Scopes. So today, this week, it's from the 14th of May right up until the 20th of May and we've got a new moon this week. So I won't be including the new moon audio in this weekly scope, but if you check out the link, it will be there for you to listen to. So yeah. Okay, so on the 14th of May, we've got a void of course moon that starts at 10.17pm. Void of course moon is when some astrologers say we should pull off important things during that time. So it's only staying there for about half an hour because then the moon enters Pisces at 10.54. So this can increase our sensitivity and empathy. It can be a time when emotions run deep and people may feel more in tune with their intuition and spiritual side. So yeah, the Pisces moon brings creative and imaginative energy, making it a good time to you know be artistic to do meditation do introspection self-reflection going within you but on the negative side people can become overwhelmed or lost in their emotions or be too sensitive and see everything as criticism so be aware of that it's essential to take care of yourself during this time and not allow yourself to become too absorbed in negative thoughts or emotions it can also be a time when boundaries may be blurred and people may struggle with setting healthy boundaries in relationships. The best use of this transit is to embrace the creative and intuitive energy while practicing self-care setting boundaries when necessary. Also today the sun makes a semi-square to Venus so again this brings sort of like a pressure principle and encourages us to indulge in activities that can bring us joy and satisfaction but we've got the moon in Pisces, so Neptune can make us all indulge in, you know, food, sets, hookups, porn, and, you know, drugs, so watch out for that. And also, because the sun's semi-square in Venus, this energy is amplified, so there can be over-the-top displays of affection, extravagant um, spending, and just the excess of people seeking and indulging in all forms of um, pleasure, seeking an egotistical behavior so while you know this is a good energy to have some fun and have an enjoyable time it's helpful to be mindful of the potential of the negative consequences of doing too much and the consequences that often come from that but on the positive side this energy also adds to the vibration of how Helping you find more creative solutions to your problems and tapping into your creative side and by tapping into this natural sense of pleasant enjoyment you can use this transit to enhance your psychological and emotional well-being and create more joy in your life so yeah that was the 14th of May now on the 15th of May Mercury goes direct out of retrograde yay so this may bring relief to those who have experienced communication and technology kind of uh, misfortunes mishaps during the retrograde period so it's a good time to resolve any misunderstandings or miscommunications that happened when Mercury was in retrograde it's also a time to reflect on you know the lessons that you can learn from anything that went wrong during the retrograde period and how you can move forward in your life with new insights and perspectives so you know when next mercury retrograde period comes around or just in general you don't repeat the same mistakes in life although the end of mercury retrograde does bring us that relief it's important to remember that the transition period can also be challenging it's still in its pre shadow period and I think it's going to stay there till about the 31st of May to about the 2nd of June so you know it's going to be a slow transition so there still can be some sort of confusion and disorientation as we adjust to the new flow of communication and um, you know getting used to technology again especially if you've been taking a social media break or, or anything like that so just be patient with yourself um, during this time take things slowly double check any important documents and emails because as I said the retrograde period may still have residual effects so think before you say and do things so the best um, use of this energy is to reflect resolve any conflicts and move forward with a newfound sense of clarity and direction on the 16th of May there's a moon void of course and this starts at 42 minutes past midnight then the moon enters its balsamic moon phase at 2 11 a.m. so the balsamic moon happens just before a new moon 
During this phase, the moon is barely visible in the sky and appears as a thin crescent. This phase is associated with endings, closure and reflection, making it a powerful time to let go of what no longer serves you and prepare for the new cycle of the new moon. One of the main benefits of the balsamic moon phase is its ability to help us release old belief, behaviour and relationship patterns. Also good to review the past month, what you did right, what you've done wrong, what you want from the coming month when, you, you know, when the new moon happens and making a strategic plan to make any necessary adjustments in your thoughts, behaviours slowly um, over time because you can't do everything all at once. So it's also time to slow down, take some relaxation and focus and self-care as well. On the negative end, the balsamic moon phase can make us a bit more sad and nostalgic because we can think about the people and the things we may have lost in our past and the things that we may need to let go of and this can cause us some suffering and pain. But it's essential to embrace these emotions, sit with them and work through them and eventually let them go and also use them as fill, you know, for your overall personal growth and transformation. So overall, the balsamic moon phase is a powerful time to reflect, release and prepare for new beginnings. So yeah. On the 17th of May, the moon enters Aries at 3.07 a.m. in the morning. So as you know, Aries energy brings a wave of energy and assertiveness. It's a time to take action and pursue goals with confidence and determination. Aries is a fire sign and the moon's transit through this sign can ignite a spark in our emotional nature, making us feel more impulsive and passionate, which is, you know, great because, you know, it can make us feel more excited and enthusiastic, but it also can be battled this impulsiveness and passionate sort of feelings we can have because this can lead to confrontations and disagreements especially if we cross other people's boundaries right now so it's essential to be mindful of how this lunar transit can affect you and those around you and channel the energy positively rather than you know go after what you want and ignore other people and be too pussy and just cause more tension in your relationships if you do feel yourself having that excess energy it's good to do physical activities that require strength and endurance maybe a run maybe some weights some jumping on the trampoline or rebounding or any other exercise that helps you feel like you're letting go of some steam so you know it's great for all types of physical workouts and physical challenges as we're giving more energy and motivation at this time or at least giving the chance to tap into it also excellent time to take um, calculated risks and put yourself out there you know go for that promotion and start that new project try something new or when you say a conversation you've been avoiding so this could be with a crush or with an existing partner friend or family but it is important to balance this kind of boldness of energy that Aries brings with self-awareness and considerations for others feelings so yeah we must be mindful of our words and actions at this time but overall when the moon's in Aries, it's a time of action and adventure. Use this energy to your advantage by taking those bold steps towards your goals, but remember to keep a level head and consider the needs of those around you. With proper mindfulness, this can be a powerful and transformative time. Also today, the sun makes a set style with Neptune, so it's a time when our imagination and creativity can be high, and so it's great to explore our spirituality, do anything creative as well. Again, this can lead to us bringing tension in our relationships because Neptune energy can make us very elusive and saying things that we don't mean or other people can manipulate us and with the uh, moon in Aries you know people can cross other people's boundaries so watch out for um, escapist behaviour you know taking drugs and stuff like that and doing anything too much so lack of grounding because this can lead to feelings of confusion or more disillusionment so the key to make the most of this transit is to harness the creative energy, use it to inspire you and um, stay grounded and be mindful of any tendencies towards avoidance or escapism. Doing meditation, spending time near water can be really beneficial to you at this time as they can help you um, nourish your spirit and connect you more deeper with your intuition or your 
deductive logical reasoning skills so by embracing because we've got the sun involved in sun you start masculine logical energy neptune is more intuitive so you know it can go either way depending on which mode of expression you choose so ultimately this um, transit can be used for personal growth and self-awareness and also just you know taking some time out to be more in your intuitive self more in your feelings in a healthy way so yeah on the 18th of May, the moon world of course starts at 10.18 a.m. And that's all that happens today now. On the 19th of May, we've got a lot going on. First of all, there's a, um, the moon enters Taurus at 9.06 a.m. So this can be a time of emotional um, stability and practicality because the Taurus influence brings a sense of grounding and security, making it a good time for financial planning and investments. It's also a great time to focus on self-care and indulging um, physical pleasures such as good food, good people and being in the most you know, comfortable surroundings for you. Also great energy to get in touch with the earth, you know, gardening, walking barefoot, going for a walk, anything to do with that because um, Taurus is in our sign and it loves all that kind of um, you know, going within yourself or just connecting with others in nature in a deeper way. On the downside, the Taurus moon can bring that stubbornness and a resistance to change and it may be difficult to let go of old ways of um, thinking and your other habits as well. So it's essential to be mindful of all the indulgence in material possessions and spending too much, being too materialistic, not sharing with others and stuff as well, as it can, you know, be too attached to money and possessions and thinking lead to an unhealthy or make an attachment to luxury and overspending even more deeper right now. So the best use of this transit is to focus on practical matters such as organising finances or creating or comfort in your home or in your relationships as well. It's also a good time to reflect on your personal values and get to the bottom of what brings you true satisfaction and security and do more of that right now. Also today there's a new moon in Taurus at 4.54pm I'm talking about that in a separate audio, so check out the playlist for that. So yeah, on the 20th of May, the moon void of course starts at 7.58am and um, today we have Mars squaring Jupiter as well. So on one hand, people can feel the strong urge to live more full and busy life right now, so socialise more, get a lot of things done but watch out for taking on too much as well but also this energy is to do the things you've been putting off so you can achieve successful results from your actions so it's a great motivator for those who are seeking to you know push through make new connections um, but on the negative end there can be conflicts particularly over perspectives and beliefs and you know we live in this world so always being decisive and saying well my belief is better than your belief and stuff so people can all go over things like religious beliefs gender issues and stuff so just watch out for that try and be respectful of other people's boundaries and say what you need to say in an assertive but caring way to avoid sort of like um, conflicts we have to be careful of what we say because there can be potential legal or business or relationship disputes that may come about because of this transit because I've said people may want to assert their Mars energy more and Jupiter expands everything so people can just be exaggerating more on their speech and actions and also their reactions as well which can lead to unnecessary drama and tension right now. On the other hand, um, the Sun is also making a time to Pluto. So it, although it brings a more positive outlook, we're talking like Pluto and the Sun energy which can be egotistical and pussy and obsessive and jealous as well so this can amplify the drama and tension caused by Mars square to Jupiter but all in all this energy indicates subtle shifts in power that can be beneficial for individuals and collectors on the collective level you know there may be government programs or some other news that brings some sort of social um, regeneration and change as well also this energy is good for intense and productive activities so supporting you going after your goals as well as long as you know you watch that you don't cross other people's boundaries and respect other people's feelings also good energy to focus on self-improvement and personal growth and to make positive changes in your life 
but it's important reminders why to remain humble and not let any newfound power because some of you may get a promotion or I don't know people may trust in you confide some news in you or don't let it go to your head and don't break that trust as well so yeah it's important to stay grounded right now so yeah that was the weekly scopes 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 from the 14th of may right up until the 20th of may take care